to see for oneself is called as autopsy that is the literal meaning of autopsy then what is necropsy necros means dead opis means few is the most accurate term for investigating or dissection of the body so it is an important point what is necropsy or what is the most accurate term for investigating or dissection of a dead body the question is what is the most accurate term for investigate dissection of the dead body autopsy postmortem or necropsy none of them the correct answer is necropsy because it is dead and opis is view so it is called as necropsy this is the most accurate term but autopsy this is a common term we are using auto means self opis means view but the correct term is dead necros necropsy is the correct term but then postmortem what is postmortem that is a common term that is any layman can use that is called as postmortem we are waiting for postmortem so it is a common term that is a common terminology but the correct or most accurate term is autopsy so classification of autopsy this classified basically into two one is clinical autopsy next is forensic autopsy so what is clinical autopsy if some person is died without a diagnosis without a correct diagnosis so we are suspecting some two three conditions but we are not in, we are sure of some diagnosis so to confirm it we are doing an autopsy it is called as clinical autopsy so it can be complete or it can be a partial so if some pathology in the liver we are dissecting only the liver then it is partial autopsy or it can go for a complete autopsy also but the forensic autopsy which is done to identify the cause of death it always complete so these are the two basic classification of autopsy one is clinical autopsy next is forensic autopsy the clinical autopsy is again divided into complete and partial the, the complete and partial and forensic autopsy it always complete then different types of incisions in autopsy the first one is called as i shaped incision you can see here sorry this is called as i shaped incision next is y shaped incision and next is modified y shaped incision so these are the three different incisions let's see what are the advantages and disadvantages of these three incisions then what is the common method of incision it is i shaped incision why it is easy and fast technique then what is y shaped incision it is most cosmetic spares the skin and neck axillary neck region are easily accessible the disadvantage is more tedious procedures and require more time and what is more what is modified y shaped incision which is help to exposure the neck region it is faster than y shaped techniques more tedious procedure require more time do not give adequate exposure to access sorry access and axillary region these are the disadvantages of this the three different types of incisions okay then various techniques to remove the organ from the body so once these incisions are over now we should take the uh, organs from the body for the dissection what are the different techniques first technique is virchow's technique here each organ is removed separately one by one and then studied individually so first we are taking the kidney then we are taking the liver when then we are taking the uh, so what is the respiratory organs which is called as virchow's technique here one by one organ is taking and dissecting so first liver is taking then kidney is taking then uh, heart is taking then lungs is taking so one by one organ is taking that is called as virchow's technique next is lettulay's technique here removing all the indian organs in a single mass so here all the indian organs are removing at a time all those in removal organs if at a time is called as let to technique next is gons technique organ systems are removed separately from the body so what is happening gons technique first removing the git so esophagus stomach then uh, intestine large intestine small intestine is removing that is called as removing system based first respiratory larynx then after that lungs all those systems are removed is called as gons technique so here the organs are removed in systematic or system based 
So first we have studied removing it for each individual organ. Then it works at a time. As a single mass, it is removing. Next is organ or systems are removed in system order. <coughs> Next is Prokhodinsky system. Organs are dissected within the body without removing them. So here the dissection is done within the body only. They are not taking out of the out 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 of, out of the body. It is dissection is done inside the body only. When the body is infected with a sorry in, infected and will pose a serious health hazard, this method is followed. So this is an, this can be asked as a question. When body is infected and will pose a serious health Hazard. Which method is advisable? Which was led to bonds or Rokitansky? The answer should be Rokitansky's method. And next important thing in the autopsy chapter is exhumation. Exhumation means to dig out the corpse from the ground. It is a lawful process retrieval from previously buried body for postmortem examination. In India, there is no time limit. It is important. There is no time limit for carrying out exhumation. So some foreign countries, they have given some time limits for exhumation, but in India, there is no time limit for carrying out exhumations. So next point is postmortem artifacts. What is postmortem artifacts? Postmortem artifact is any change or new features introduced into the body after death. So these are the changes occurred after death. So these are changes occurred after death. Such features or changes poses difficult to interpret in autopsy finding. So some insect bite after death or some injuries after death, or oh, sorry, some during autopsy, some changes or some incisions during autopsy. So all those changes, which is happening after death, if the body is thrown in a public place or if the body is under the forest or some situations um, there are some changes in the body, some insect bite or some animal attacks is called as postmortem artifacts. So this is nothing but the changes or new features introduced to the body after death is called as postmortem artifacts. And let's see what are the changes after death. So that is about the autopsy. That are some things in related to autopsy. Next we are going to see what are the changes after death than postmortem changes. So this is deal with the brand called thanatology. So here we have to see what are the types of death. Then we have to see what are the immediate changes after death, what are the late changes after death, and what are the early changes after death. So these are things we have to see in this chapter. So let's start with the thanatology. It is derived from the Greek word. Again, it is derived from the Greek word. Thanatos means death. Logos means science. So it is related to death. So this is some science related to death. It's called as thanatology. So it is a branch of medical science that deals with the study of death. There are two types of death. One is somatic death and next is molecular death. What is somatic death? There is complete and irreversible cessation of the functions of circulation, respiration, and CNS. This is called as tripoid of life. So this tripoid of life CNS, CVS, and RS. So, cessation of these three systems, CNS, CVS, and RS, that is called as tripoid of life. Cessation of that, sorry, irreversible cessation of this system is called as somatic death. So, heart is not working, brain is not working, respiration is not working. We are called, it is dead. It is called as Somatic death. It is a physical stoppage of functions of heart, lungs, and brain is called as somatic death. So I hope that definition of somatic death is clear. Somatic death is nothing but it is a so cessation of all these three tripoid of life. What all these three basic systems is called as somatic death. Then what is molecular death? So first stage, what is happened? All these three vital or this tripoid of life is stopped. But what about each and every individual cells? Each and individual cells will die after some time. That's why we are taking organ transplantation, so corneal transplantation, all those procedures we are doing after somatic death. It is in the molecular death what is happening. It is also called a cellular death. It means death of each and every individual cells. Not each and every individual cells are dying. 
from different tissues or organ is called as molecular or cellular death. So we have studied somatic death is there, molecular death is there. In the somatic death, the tripoid of life, that is CVS, CNS, and RS is stopping their functions. In case of molecular death, here each and every cell is dying. It is called as somatic molecular death or cellular death. I hope that is clear. This, these are the two types of death. Now let's see one more time. It is called as apparent death. What is apparent death? It is also called as suspended animation. Suspended animation. It is defined as a state of body in which the vital functions are such low pitch that the body functions cannot be determined by ordinary methods of clinical examination. Here, the body function, like the CVS or RS, or like uh, our body functions cannot be determined by ordinary method. When you are auscultating, we cannot hear the respiratory sounds. When we are checking for the pulse, we cannot feel that. We cannot determine because it is at such low pitch. It is at a such a low pitch. That body, but it is working, but it is at a such a low pitch and we are not able to appreciate it. It can be two types. It can be again voluntary and involuntary. So we are seen in uh, our uh, great uh, Samadhi, all those yogis and all those people, they are going for a suspended animation. So here, what is happening? Here the person practice it voluntary. For example, yogis or sadhus or sannyasis, they are practicing this method. So when they can hold their breath at a such a low pitch. So nobody, whenever I was him, we cannot appreciate it. It's called as voluntary suspender animation. What about this involuntary suspender animation? Here the person lands in apparent death spontaneously. In some cases before dying, if they are going to a stage called involuntary apparent death or involuntary suspended animation. So before dying, they are going to this stage and they are dying. Uh, now, this is the best and best, most important term in forensic medicine that is called as changes after death. The changes after death, we are dividing into three. Immediate changes after death, early changes after death, and late changes after death. So, what is the immediate changes after death? These are insensibility, cessation of respiration, cessation of circulation. This is called as immediate changes of the death. So, the earliest sign of death is insensibility and there is cessation of respiration. It must be complete and continuous cessation of respiration, then cessation of circulation. So when we are exp examining in the precordial region, under normal conditions, stoppage of heartbeat more than five minutes is accept accepted as evidence of death. It's called as, these are the immediate changes. So immediate changes are insensibility, cessation of respiration, cessation of circulation. Then the early changes, the changes in the skin, changes in the eye, primary flaccidity. Then these are the three very important things, algal motis, liver motis, and rigor motis. What is algal motis? It is cooling of the body. What is liver motis? It is a discoloration of the skin. What is rigor motis? It is a stiffening of the muscle. These three terms are very, 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 very important. Algal motis, liver motis, and rigor motis. Here, one is cooling of the body. So after dying, after a so certain time, the body become cool or body become cool. That is called as algal motis. Then the liver motis. On the depending parts, there are some color changes. It's called as liver motis. Then after death, the muscles become stiff. This process is called as rigor motis. Let's see one by one. So changes in the skin. Skin become pale with ashy white appearances. Losses with elasticity due to draining of blood from small blood vessels. In the changes in the cornea, the cornea reflex will be lost. Cornea become opaque and tends dry within three hours from death. So it is important. Cornea become dry within the three hours from death. This time is period up to cornea can be taken for transplantation. Then changes in the sclera, there is one time is called as tachinoir. It is important. What is what is tachinoir? If eyelids are open for few hours, so after dying, if, if eyes are not closed, it is kept open for few hours. A film of cell debris and mucus form yellow triangle in the sclera. So, 
there will be a yellow triangle in the sclera and with the dust settling in not set, settling on it and become wrinkled and brown the area of discoloration is triangular with base at the peripheral of the cornea is called as tachinoid so after dye if there is some discoloration in the sclera when it is become due to some dust which is settling on the sclera it become wrinkled and brown this area of discoloration form a triangular base at periphery of the cornea so it is called as tachinoid it is derived from a french word so the tachinoid is seen in sclera that you should remember then the changes in the pupil pupils will initially dilate and become ovate triangular or polyglonal when pressure with the finger is applied so that are some changes in the skin and eyes it is not important the changes in the skin and eyes are not important as considered of a mcq point of view but when it is asked for a long essay we used to deal with it but just for a knowledge i have shared this if you are uh, don't need of concentrating much on tachinoid or the eyes or cornea or skin but the important thing is algar modis rigor modis and labor modis it's very important so what is algar mortis it is algar means coldness mortis means death so it is nothing but it is the cooling of the body after death and the best place to record the temperature is rectum it's very important mcq the best place for recording the temperature in for, for the dead body it is rectum it is very important after rectum it is inferior surface of the liver after inferior surface of the liver it is intra oral and after that intra nasal it is used with a rectal thermometer so the rectal temperature is measured by rectal thermometer it is of 25 cm length we can measure up to 50 degrees celsius so this is about algar mortis so this is very important the best place to record the temperature is rectum let's see some what these are some factors which is this is not very important this is the temperature between body and medium and build of the cadaver physic of the cadaver the environment of the body covering of the body these are some factors which is help which is uh, affecting the cooling of the body okay so next important thing is post mortem callosity so uh, along with the algar mortis i would like to discuss post mortem callosity also so what is callosity it is a physiological ability to maintain the body temperature post mortem callosity is a term applied for the rise of temperature observed in first 2 hours after death so we have seen so suppose this is a graph this is the side implies us the time since death this side implies the temperature so what is happening the temperature will be like this it is called as algar mortis but what is happening in this first two hours how noticed here the first two hours the body temperature is slightly elevated this is called as post mortem callosity this is called as algar mortis but this first two hours this initial temperature is called as post mortem callosity so post mortem callosity is the term applied for the rise of temperature observed in the first two hours after death it is due to post mortem glycogenolysis it is due to the actions of microorganisms which is causing to the breaking of atp molecules and the chemical changes going after death so all those procedures all those things are happening the microorganisms are acting and breaking down of atp is happening and molecular and chemical changes are happening so in this first two hours there will be a slight rise of temperature it is called as post mortem callosity in especially in the case of if the cause of death is septicemia or sunstroke tetanus we can notice post mortem callosity very clearly the next thing is liver mortis it is also called as post mortem hypostasis post mortem staining sagglination vipsis or post mortem lividity these are all are synonyms for the same so what is this post mortem lividity post mortem lividity is the purplish or bluish discoloration sorry bluish or reddish blue discoloration due to settling of blood by gravitational force within the dependent 
parts so within the dependent parts the dilated and toneless small veins and capillaries of pretty museum so this is very important so this is nothing but the purplish or purplish blue blue or reddish blue discolored on settling the blood due to gravitational force within the dependent part so you can see here you can see the discoloration you can see on the dependent parts here you can see on the dependent part the discoloration so we can come will come to know what is the position of the body on the dependent part the colors will be purplish blue or reddish blue we can see a purplish blue discoloration or red, reddish blue discoloration on the dependent part of the body so we can we can estimate the time since death if it is half an to one hour we can see small patches of discoloration okay at the six hours it is well developed patches and six to eight hours this liberty or this post mortem color change will be fixed so this is the way how we can estimate this time since death using post mortem liberty this is very 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 important this you should by heart and go i will give you a chart anything can be asked from this pink discoloration is seen if the we have seen in the post mortem liberty these are the different color colors these are the different conditions this anything can be asked better you can take a screenshot or this is very important you should by heart attend pink color discoloration seen in carbon monoxide poison where you have seen cherry red it is seen in cyanide pink or cherry red again again pinkish again pink so a pinkish is seen in three conditions fluoroacetate refrigerations and hypothermia the pinkish discoloration is there brownish discoloration is seen in sodium chloride poison or green discoloration is seen in hydrogen sulfate poison deep blue is seen in aniline poison bluish discoloration is seen in carbon dioxide poison so this color and this causes are very important the mechanism is not much important but you should see which color is seen in which type of poison and one more thing is next topic is rigor mortis rigor mortis is the state of muscles of dead body where they become stiff with some degree of shortening that follows the period of primary flaccidity so the muscles become stiff after death so before this is called as rigor mortis this is a muscular chain the muscles become stiff so when we are we are seeing in the dead body so whenever the dead put it there before we have to keep the legs and hands in the proper position what is happening after that the muscles become rigid and we cannot move the hands or extremities easily so that is called as rigor mortis and in that one more time is there cadaveric spasm what is cadaveric spasm it is occur only in a group of muscles the rigor mortis we are seeing the all over the body all over the muscles but the cadaveric spasm is occurring only in a group of muscles instead of going under primary relaxation after that go into a sudden state of stiffening so here the primary relaxation is not there it is going directly into a state of stain so here you can see while dying what are the active muscles involved during dying suppose if the, the suppose he is holding some weapons or some grass or some uh, mud or something but he is holding tightly this hand muscles are actively involved during his death time so this will go for a sudden stiffening it is called as cadaveric spasm so i will repeat the muscles which is actively involved during muscles undergoing a spasm which is called as cadaveric spasm is a state where the muscles or a group of muscles instead of going primary relaxation which is active during the death going for a sudden stiffening is called as cadaveric spasm and that is about the early changes so we have seen rigor mortis algar mortis and liver mortis what is algar mortis it is called as cooling of the body immediately after die the body temperature will fall down it is called as algar mortis the best place to remove uh, not down the temperature is rectum it is used by rectal thermometer that is called as algar mortis and next is what is post mortem calorosity what is happening in the first two hours this rise of temperature is called as 
postmortem caloricity. The next after that we have study liver motifs. On the dependent part, the discoloration is called as postmortem liberty or liver motifs. So we have studied different different colors and what are the different different causes. After that we have studied rigor motifs and cadaveric also. So these are the early changes in the death. The last topic is late changes after death. So the late changes after death is decomposition and modified decomposition. In the decomposition, it is putrefaction and autolysis. In modified decomposition, it is adiposity formation and mummification. So the late changes is the late change of death is decomposition. It can be decomposition or it can be modified decomposition. If it is modified for decomposition, it is adiposity and mummification. In decomposition, it will lead for autolysis and putrefaction. We'll see one by one and then you will understand it better. So after dying, the body will turn into different, different forms. Let's see what is decomposition or putrefaction. It is the last stage of resolution of the body from organic into inorganic state in certain signs of death. It is called as that is called as decomposition. That is, we have studied decomposition. Now we are going to study what is autolysis and what is putrefaction. So decomposition is the body is the organic form is converted to inorganic state. Okay. What is happening in autolysis? The rise of enzyme levels in the tissue cells after death, softening and liquefying of the body tissue. It is start in three to four hours after death and continues for two to three days. So here you can see the skin is the autolysis happened in skin and epidermis. See, because of skin and epidermis, there is microorganisms are acting and it is removed from the epidermis is loosened from the dermis. So, so the microorganisms are acting in these two layers. The microorganisms are acting in the epidermal layer and dermis layer. So the epidermis become loose because of the action of the microorganisms. This is called as autolysis. The cell is dying. Next is called as adiposity. This is called as modified putrefaction. In this process of putrefaction, the, the body, sorry, the modified form of putrefaction, the dead body. So the, it will lead to adiposity formation. So the fatty tissues are, sorry, the hydrolysis of fatty tissue into fatty acids. The bacterial fat is splitting enzymes and moistures are essential. The compost of saturated fatty acids by palmic, stratic, and so, sorry, hydro, hydroxy, steric, and oleic acids. So these are the very important. So what is happening here? The body converted into fatty or fatty acids. The body tissues are converted into fatty or fatty acids. And next is mummification. So the modified next is mummification. It is the peculiar dissection of the dead body where by its soft parts shiver, shrivel up but retain the natural appearance and features of the body. Rusty brown color, dry leathery skin adherent to the bones. It is internal organs get transformed into thick brown masses. So we have seen the Egypt mummies or the mummified bodies we are seeing. So here that is happening in mummified bodies. So one thing is decomposition. That is a general fate of the body. It will go for an autolysis and it will go for a putrefaction. After putrefaction, it will become skeleton remains and the skeleton remains will get into the, uh, it will completely, com sorry, completely dissolute in the body. That is called as decomposition. In adiposire, the body is converted into brown fatty acids, fatty changes. In mummification, it has become dry and it is it is preserved for the dissection or in the anatomy studies or in the mummy, mummies in the Egypt. So this is the late changes after death. Let's go for this and I will take We'll take a two minutes break because I think it is hectic and it is getting more complicated. So we'll take two minutes break after this. So we'll solve these questions and we'll go for two minutes break.
Okay, can you answer this and we'll go for a break because I think it is become more hectic, I guess. Because it is too much of things to be covered. Can you answer this? Yeah. Menu Rao. Yeah, correct answer. Correct answer, correct answer. Okay. Next. Okay. Yeah, next, next answer. It is asked in Kerala PSC 9090 question paper. Yeah, good correct answer. It is asked in All India Medical Test in 2005 and 2006. It is a repeated question. Okay, correct answer. It is also asked in 2000 question paper. Let's see who will answer this. This is like, you should recollect it. Let's see. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Correct answer. This is the correct answer. Very good, good. 